All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine a lot of the techniques that we've learned into one giant technique. And so what we have here is solid iron, and, and the formula or the equation is given to us in words, which means we're going to need to take the step of converting those words and the names into the formulas and then t making sure that that formula or the equation that we get is a balanced equation. So what they say is they have solid iron and gaseous chlorine. So I've got iron, solid, ga chlorine with the gas. Form iron 3 chloride powder. Now powder means it's a solid as opposed to a solution of iron chloride. All right, write out a balance equation for this reaction. Okay, so here's what we gotta do. First thing is we have iron, Fe. No oxidation number, just happy as a clam. And I put the little s to signify that this is a solid type of iron. Now, chlorine is right here. And the thing about chlorine is it's what we call a diatomic element. It means if it's existing by itself, it likes to come in pairs. And there's a few elements out there that do that. One of them would be um, hydrogen, nitrogen, uh, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. And one of the ways I remember this is have no fear of ice cold bratwurst. And I know you're like, wait a second, that doesn't make any sense at all. If you're eating bratwurst, which is a sausage, you won't want that ice cold because that means it would be raw and that would be definitely something to fear. Well, when I originally learned it, it's have no fear of ice cold beer. And I'm actually much more afraid of beer than bratwurst. So I just changed it over to bratwurst. Maybe I should use broccoli. Have no fear of ice cold broccoli. Okay, well, you can eat your broccoli ice cold. I prefer mine's cooked, but I'm not afraid of the ice cold version. So have no fear of ice cold broccoli. And that just means that all of these actually exist as H2 or N2 or F2. That's supposed to be a two. Uh, O2, I2, BR, or Cl2, and Br2. Those are my di diatomic elements. So Cl doesn't exist by itself. It just kind of always comes in pairs. Now, Iron, iron three chlorine. Okay, so um, I know that chlorine has an oxidation number of, all right, I know chlorine has an oxidation number of mm, negative one. And I know iron has an oxidation number of, well, I have no idea. Let me check the cheat sheet here, Fe. Well, it could either be three or two, but actually they told us what it is. It's, um, it's three right because let's see here it is they told us the stock name is iron 3 so we've got fe3 cl with a negative 1 that means i'm going to need three chlorines to balance out with that one actually not it's not fe3 it's fe oxidation number 3 with my cl negative 1 that means i'm going to need three chlorines to balance out with that one iron so essentially, if I wanted to write this down, it's Fe with the number, or no, no number there, and then I've got the one chlorine, and I've got three of those to balance that out. And this, of course, is a solid. Now, you would think that we're done here, but all we've done is convert the name into a formula, but we haven't made sure that the left side and the right side are balanced. Now, the way that I would balance things is, and, and there are different techniques, I have a, a really interesting one. I, I think the way I like to do it is, I like to kind of just leave the easy, leave the simplest thing for last. And in this case, the simplest thing to me looks like it's the iron. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna look at the chlorine. There are two on the left side and there are three on the right side. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to balance this thing out, per se. Hmm. Since this is the first time I'm doing a balance equation, actually, I'm going to show you consistently the way I like to do it. And then you can look at the book and see the way the book likes to do it. And then I know, I know for a fact that you're probably not going to like my way better. But I can tell you this. 
as we get into much more complicated balancing equations, I'm going to use the same technique, um, this you know weirder technique, and it's going to apply to harder scenarios. Whereas um, the way the book does it, it's probably going to have to switch up things and all of that kind of stuff. So here's the, I'll, let me show you what I've got here. Essentially, the way I'm going to look at this is I want three chlorines on the left side, but I only have two chlorines on the left side, and there's no number I can multiply this thing by in order to make that a number three. I can't multiply it by two, and that would make four chlorines on the left side, and still keep three on that side. So in essence, I kind of like doing this. I'm a big fan of going like this. All right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by a fraction. Three over two. See this divide two kind of knocks this Cl2 down to a Cl1, and then the, multiply that by three, and you're left with three chlorines on the left side and three chlorines on the right side. And actually your irons are, are balanced as well. See, there's one iron on the left side and one iron on the right side. Now there's no such thing as a coefficient that is a fraction. See that number in front, that's a coefficient, and there's no such thing as that being a fraction. So what we need to do is kind of clear out the fraction. And to do that, you just simply multiply through by the denominator. Multiply everything by two. So I have two Fe solid plus 2 times 3 halves Cl2 gas gives me 2 Fe Cl3 solid. And then this 2 cancels out with that 2, and that's kind of exactly the point because I'm trying to get rid of that denominator. And actually, I have a balanced equation. I mean, if you look at it, how many irons do we have on the left side? Let's this is what my proposed answer is, and so let's check to see if I've got that right. How many irons do we have on the left side? We've got two irons. On the right side, we have two of them. How many chlorines do we have on the left side? On the left side, we have six of them because there's three Cl2s, so there's six of them all together. And over here, we have two Cl3s, so there are actually six of them all together. We have a balanced equation, my friends. And I know that this takes a few extra steps and it's actually a little bit more complicated, but essentially it's not really a very hard thing. It's just kind of a combination of two easy things making it seem like it's a hard thing. All right, I hope that helps.